Hey, how you doing? My name is Anthony DiLiberto. I'm 25 years old. Uh, we're here at my shop in Fairlawn, New Jersey. I'm located about uh, 15 to 20 minutes outside of New York City. Uh, I'm a pinstriper, sign painter, truck lettering, custom paint, kind of a little bit of everything. Uh, if it stands still long enough, I'll, I'll paint it. <laughs> Uh, I've been doing this, well, I started when I'm 14, uh, by the time this video comes out I'll be 26, and uh, I've been doing it uh, professionally for about, I would say, 8 to 10 of those years, um, for you know paid clientele and whatnot. So when I first started uh, early on in my career, um, I befriended Alan Johnson of uh, Blairstown, New Jersey, um, a very affluent painter from New Jersey and just, you know, in our industry. Um, and he took a liking to me, um, you know, at, in my uh, initiative at a young age and, um, you know, let me follow him around to some shows and kind of showed me the ropes, but more um, on the business side of things um, compared to the painting. Um, I kind of had a, um, a decent start at, at the painting. So uh, we kind of just picked up on you know, things that I, I didn't know or I couldn't read in a book, like pricing work and talking to customers. But otherwise, I've been uh, pretty much self-taught. I've taken some classes over the years with uh, David Kinnison or Jeff Deavy. Um, and uh, I've taught a, a couple of small classes, just um, little simple stuff, nothing too crazy, but pretty much self-taught. I read Alan Johnson's book. I recommend it to everybody. I mean, there was a point in time I could quote, you know, the page and or what side of the, the page you know, uh, the information came from. And a lot of that stuff I still use every single day. Um, as social media came around, I got a little bit older. Um, that was when I think the sign painting resurgence kind of came up. You know, I remember when there was only, you know, the maybe 50 of us on Instagram who did pinstriping at all. Um, and I would ask questions and that's how I met guys like uh, Tukey or Hot Rod Gen, Igor, um, and I, you know, I annoyed them uh, throughout my early years with a lot of questions, and I still annoy them now. <laughs> so, uh, for the last uh, year now, I've switched over to using uh, Exalta's Hot Hues line for pinstriping. It's a urethane um, two-part paint, so there's an activator involved. Um, because I do a lot of commercial truck lettering, um, a lot of signs, pinstriping uh, on a lot of the newer bikes and stuff. And a lot of people, you know, uh, one shot, you know, maybe getting gas on it or something or uh, the truck lettering fading, you know, or blowing off of the power washer. Um, I, it kind of got to the point where my business and clientele grew to where I could start charging and using the better quality uh, material. So I switched over to that. Uh, from one shot. I mean, I used one shot for 10 years prior and learned with it. I still have one shot. I still carry it, use it. Um, there's plenty of applications where one shot is, you know, the right tool, but I'm, I try to adapt to using the product that best suits, uh, you know, whatever job I'm working on. And then as far as brushes are concerned, um, uh, some of the signature series brushes, uh, Todd Hansen's brushes are really uh, awesome. The, uh, the Alien uh, the new Alien brush, and then, um, you know, his other lines, and then uh, Von Dago's brushes are great. Uh, just a traditional triple zero blue wrap, pretty much an industry standard. I always keep, you know, five or six of them uh, in my uh, stash at any given time. Uh, for lettering, I use uh, Rights of Limb. They're 1315, so that's a stable mix. They're made over in the UK. I've been using those brushes for about 10 years now. They are kick-ass. Not a lot of people use them. Not a lot of people know about them. Um, they're a little tricky to get. Um, I buy them in a batch once or twice a year. I'll buy, um, you know, five or 10 of each size. Uh, I'm a firm believer in not exhausting a brush. It's a tool, it's, it, they're expendables. You use them, they pay for themselves, but you always get a better quality, um, you know, constantly using new equipment. Um, so I don't typically hang on to brushes too, too long. Um, if anything, as they wear out, sometimes they get a little bit better. So you, your fives turns into threes and your threes turn into zeros and then your zeros turn into signature brushes. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so I just, 
constant evolving library and I'm constantly trying new brushes. Uh, one of the brushes I just picked up that I never used before was uh, Jeff Deavy's new uh, brushes. I picked up one of his, they're awesome. Uh, it kind of reminds me of like an old brown uh, Lang nickel. They got really good snap to them, good for truck lettering scripts and stuff. So uh, that's some of what I've been using lately. Uh, I like to try and know the material as best I can and what, what works and what doesn't and how to, you know, how you get one shot yellow to cover and how you get alpha enamel, you know, black to work better or how to use, you know, the Ronin line, mixing the Ronin line with the one shot line, uh, chromatic. Uh, if any, any sign painters out there have ever worked with the chromatic line, uh, it's kind of like a generic name brand of one shot, I believe. Um, and then of course the hot hues and, you know, there's, the hot hues is, is a big learning curve. I never used urethanes before. That was my really first go at it. Um, I dabble with some of the House of Color stuff, but uh, um, when I switched over to the hot hues, it was a big learning curve with mixing custom colors and sometimes you gotta over mix and then you only activate part of it. Um, you know, uh, doing a lot of, I do a lot of body shop um, collision repair work. So it's a little tricky because a lot of the cars that you're repairing were pinstriped with one shot. So some of the hot hues colors don't match up exactly. So you end up trying to mix, you know, their blazer blue to look like process blue um, or, you know, a one shot ivory to, they don't make an ivory. So you have to like mix ivory every time I actually mix a whole batch of it. Um, and I kind of get it, I mix the batch to kind of match the one shot. So it's, you know, you kind of got to mess around with everything it, I think it's good to be familiar with everything um, and know how to make whatever you're working with do what you want it to do. I, I have, I have removed um, work, whether a customer bought a car and it wasn't their, their taste or if it was just really old and worn out and they wanted to redo it. Um, but, you know, I've done various methods to, to do that, um, you know. Yeah, oven cleaner, I've wet sanded panels, uh, buffed it off compound, sometimes just good old lacquer thinner, preps all on a rag, wipe it off. But you know, there's a couple different ways to go about it. It can get you in some sticky situations. Uh, you know, it's, it's one of the things you really can't practice, but you really hope you never mess it up. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, all, it's all really hard for me. <laughs> And I haven't mastered any of it, um, but uh, I, I, I'm kind of cultivating my truck lettering now. Um, you know, I look up to a, a lot of the big names in the truck lettering scene, and uh, just the work that they do and the level that they do it at, and it, the speed, the accuracy, uh, the creativity, the colors, the layout. I, it's blows my mind because it racks my brain to do, you know one flatbed every month or two where you know you could do two or some of these guys are doing them two three in a week and they're all totally different totally different color palettes totally different designs layouts and the execution is always just so spot on and you know it's 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 been hard for me i've been really working at it um and uh asking a lot of questions lately and it's funny the answers that you get <laughs> For instance, um, so a lot of guys are doing candied uh, leaf now. Um, it's not that they weren't before, but it's it seems to be gaining a little bit more popularity lately. Um, and I've been messing with it, trying to, to refine it a little bit better in um, the ways that I kind of go about things, because I, I always came with a figure it out. I look at work and think backwards, and um, sometimes how I do things isn't exactly the conventional way, and you, although it may work, um, I, uh, kind of like struggle with, you know, you have such a hard time with the way you're doing it. And then you, you, you finally break down, you call somebody, you ask a question and they go like, Oh no, like what? No, stop that. Why are you doing it like that? Do it like this. It's so much easier. No wonder you're having a hard time. But, uh, I just called Bert a couple weeks ago and I was asking about doing uh, the candy leaf on it. And, uh, before I even asked the question, he was just like, no, it's just really hard. And that's why not a lot of guys are doing it. 
and you know guys that are trying to you know no one's doing it in truck lettering because it's so finicky and you got to do it on both sides and there's no like you know half ass and if you screwed up it's screwed up you got to start over and it's really hard so he's like you just you just got a chance it. he's like you could do 10 of them at the same time nine of them will come out great the 10th one will go wrong he's like it's just you know flavor of the week and he was like you can do this you can do this you can do this and i was thinking to myself on the phone like oh I did all of that. Um, I didn't even ask the question yet, and he answered all of my questions. And it's like, so it's just really hard, and it just takes practice, and you know, you just have to work at it. Uh, so a lot of guys have been doing the the candy over silver leaf um, in truck lettering and pinstriping, uh, like low riders and the bike stuff. So how you do it in like vehicle lettering signs and stuff and how you do it in like custom paint it's funny because it's totally different um so to achieve this i so i'll i'll do a, a guild with the uh the silver aluminum leaf and i'll turn it and then you actually you can either back mask or you can set up your design so that you have a shadow or something that cover your overspray um, or you can come back and you can wipe it um, with a little bit of thinner on a rag I um, mean, you dust in that candy to get that gradient. And then you have to brush clear over that. But that hot clear, that activated clear, can sometimes kick over that intercoat clear. And it kind of ruins that blend. Um, if you use a vinyl mask, um, the clear kind of sets up a little fast to the vinyl. So when you go to pull the mask off, it'll actually sheet the candy right off the, the leaf. Some guys say use Bulldog Adhesion Promoter. It, it, it doesn't it doesn't help that much in my opinion um in the opinion of some of the other guys i talk to and you know you kind of just do it this way um this example here what i ended up doing was i kind of just back masked uh, around the letters as best i could um did the gradient with the candy uh, this is house of color uh pagan gold in their sg100 um intercoat clear uh through just an iwata airbrush um get that gradient in there, let it flash, and then I brush over two coats of a 2K automotive clear um, with the brush. Um, and so I'll, I'm comfortable putting this on a bike um, or truck doors and things of that nature. You do have to explain to the customer it is a little bit more fragile, but it's a, it's a really cool look. It's really difficult to achieve. You know, Bert's out there doing the whole letter, um, you know, fades and gradients in the candy and all this crazy stuff and you know it's re it's really awesome um definitely not there yet but <laughs> been practicing my pinstriping i i mean it definitely has its own style um i wouldn't say it's good or bad um i i, I have a clientele that like it um but it's definitely not like some of these other artists that are out there i mean you you see some um Little Dame, uh, Beth McCurney is a, a big inspiration. I really, really like her, her designs and her work. Um, Jen Thomas is another one. You know, her designs are just so well crafted and thought out. It's, it's really impressive. But I feel like everybody's work kind of looks better in different places. Um, you know, Tukey's really good with that early style uh, pinstriping, the, the Greek or Von Dutch Jeffrey style striping. Um, but then he can also do like 70s style, like uh, his mentor Grimes or Glenn um, Kelly style striping, um, you know, and scroll work, you know, that stuff's really cool. But my pin striping is, you know, I think it's just practical. I think it's, it's good practical pin striping. It's well liked, well received by a lot of people. I try to use as much negative space as possible. Um, you know, good colors, you know, and stacking the colors, uh, you know, everything's conducive to the eye. And, you know, um, somebody who's really good with that is uh, Bob Bahonic. You know, his pinstriping and the way he, his color theory works. Um, obviously, uh, Alan Johnson's color theory is, you know, out of this world. And his striping designs are so recognizable. Um, but as far as my pinstriping is concerned, I, I think it's just a good run, round, you know, it... I can put it on a Corvette, I can put it on a Harley, I can put it on a tractor trailer, I can put it on a 32 Ford, you know, and I, I kind of try to play to each of those to make it look uh, the best. Uh, so in high school, I, I actually enacted a school to work study 
Um, I was the first kid in my like 20 something years in my high school to do school to work. So I had really great staff um, and uh, I went out and got myself a job and I was working in automotive restoration. Uh, wasn't really college bound or anything. Um, and then that kind of changed at the end of my senior year. And I went to uh, Pennsylvania College of Technology for automotive restoration. So I have an associate's degree in automotive restoration. And I worked at a bunch of restoration shops um, after my two years of school. Um, I was at three shops in about a year and a half, um, climbing the ladder each time, working at a you know better quality shop or more specialized. Um, you know, when pay was increasing. Um, the last shop I was at, I was actually, I had my own apartment. I was 20 years old, living in uh, Danbury, Connecticut, restoring steam cars for, you know, Pebble Beach and Amelia Island. And um, that shop had some difficulties and it ended up, you know, that we, uh, we parted ways. And when I was working there, I was doing four tens. So sometimes it was like two o'clock on Thursday. I was, you know, I reached my 40 hours for the week. And, uh, and then I was pinstriping, you know, Friday, Saturday, 30 something hours, you know, in the last half of the week, you know, making twice as much money as I was on the clock. And after I got let go, I had a conversation with my father and I basically was like, next guy's running out of money is going to be me. And that was four years ago, July. Um, so I uh, left the automotive restoration behind and started pinstriping full time which was cool because cars got to be my hobby again for a little bit. <laughs> and then uh, I built a couple cars um, just on the side. And then um, the pinstriping just, you know, I, I started to get a little bit more focused. I uh, matured a little bit and uh, kind of zeroed in on my dreams, goals, and aspirations. And, you know, it's been exploding since. So, Trippy 10 Glory Days, awesome experience. Kurt. Uh, thank you so much. That was awesome. He's a really great guy and what he's trying to do for the scene in the show I think is awesome uh, The I really appreciate the an art show a real true art show. It's a helmet art show You get the helmet back, you know, it, it's It the, it has structure. Um, it's a great uh, demographic of artists wide variety of skills specialties styles um it's a great outlet for the artists. Um, I really enjoyed it. It was the first um, art show that I participated in. I painted helmets for donations as trophies and uh, different promotional things like that. But this was the first art show that I got to do. Um, and it was really funny uh, for me just because it's like, it's my helmet pretty much. You know, it's like, there's no rules. There's no nothing. It's like, you can do whatever you want, you know, um, it was it was it was pretty cool because uh, I had a lot of people that were excited to see what I was going to do. A lot of a lot of uh, artists reached out to congratulate me when I was uh, selected, which you know was a really nice experience. It's cool to see that your friends are supportive in your career, and everybody was saying they're super excited to see what I was going to do. And I kept telling everybody the same thing. I was like, I'm really excited to see how it's going to come out because I have no idea what to do. You know, it's there's zero direction really, other than make a trippy. Helmets. Uh, the biggest pressure for me was the deadline. I, uh, I, just because uh, things go wrong, and you know you're trying to do, you know, run a business and do side stuff, and you know, uh, everybody in this business knows that the amount of side stuff that you do that isn't paid, you know is immense so it's like the deadlines stack up and blah 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 so that was the one thing i was worried about but that's 100 percent my fault you know as far as uh working with the uh, you know i don't consider going up against the other artists that's uh that's not me you know it, it's not it's not a contest in in the whole industry it's not a contest some people really see it that way um there's a weird weird thing with artists and social media and especially in this industry um, a weird complex um, that I really try not to participate in just because I grew up with all the old guys all all of the big names all the big hitters and uh, like they, they all just stuck together work together everybody encouraged each other I mean the amount of work that they used to do together you know like hey I got a really cool race car call up three guys come hang you know it's like do the race car together split the money it's you know it's it's 
that's how I like to perceive even events like this. You know, um, it's just a great opportunity for everybody to get together, everybody to trade. You know, I, I looked at all the helmets and was like, oh, I really like how they did this. I really like how they did that. Oh, that's pretty cool. Or, you know, um, I think it's just a, it was a really awesome experience and a fun time. It was easy to it was easy to have fun at. Yeah, I, they were all awesome. Um, I'm I'm bad with the names and stuff, but uh, you know, just I, I I liked everybody's you know color palettes and stuff. You know, where you know some some guys use warm colors, some guys use cool colors. Uh, uh, Mike uh, Mont Montana, uh, his helmet was cool with the orange and the gold leaf. It's kind of kind of low rider, kind of California. Um, you know, glove in the dark paint. That's pretty cool. You know, uh, the flipped. Uh, visor that was neat you know I like that uh, just uh, there was a bunch of cool stuff you know I do probably 30 to 50 events a year um, from bike nights to full weekend shows and traveling um, and that's just events live uh, you know crowd work um, marketing and uh, it, I mean, people, is that wet? You know, I don't like that color. Oh, you spelled it wrong. Uh, oh, is that dry yet? Oh, can I touch it? Oh, did you really do that by hand? You know, like, it doesn't bother me at all. I could pinstripe on a stage in front of 10,000 people uh, or in the garage with the customer standing over my shoulder. It, I'm so in the zone. It, it really doesn't bother me too much. You definitely need to be going out and... Uh, as my dad likes to call it, beat the streets, you know, um, you have to go find every dollar you're going to earn. So that means going to bike night, you know, at this, this dealership on the third Tuesday, going to this bike night on the fourth Thursday, you know, going to the cruise night, going to the, the bar ride in, you know, handing out cards. You know, if you're hanging out at a bar or restaurant, you see a couple guys standing around looking at bikes, no pinstriping on them. Hey guys, you know, just real quick, local pinstriper custom paint gold leaf uh i got a shop here's my card social media is on the back you know give it a look um i give out probably 1500 cards a year um i i order you know a thousand um and i change the card um a lot of people don't change their business card i like to change the card just because sometimes um you know like you'll you'll one will stick out more to you you'll think it's a different person or blah blah you know it's like and like they'll call or blah, you know it's like it's good they'll be like oh i have one of the other ones and be like oh i have a new one now here take this one and it's like there's nothing different about it it's got all the same info but uh you know it just keeps it fresh in people's mind and um you know makes them think of you and you know not being a sh like afraid or ashamed to do anything you know i i post like a quarter of what i do i'm the worst with social media um, I'm lucky enough that I have, you know, several thousand followers, but like, I, I don't understand social media at all. I try, I research, I read about it. I ask, uh, friends and colleagues, but you know, I'll, I'll, I'll post a picture and get 35 likes on it. And I thought it was awesome. And then I'll throw up like, you know, two or three gas tanks. I did a show over the weekend and in, in, a, in a little collage and I'll get like 500 likes, you know, like a little panel that I did a couple weeks ago, I got like. 1800 likes on a one of the pinstriping facebook pages which is awesome because i've never seen anything get that many on one of the big group pages and without a bunch of people telling you that it sucks and you're the worst and to give up and uh buy books read the books don't look at the pictures don't read part of the book open the cover read the the, the title page read the memo read it cover to cover read read the book and then when you're done read it a second time because the first time you you get distracted you miss stuff you're it's a just so much information for you to just remember but it's you have to think of it as you need to know this for the rest of your life for your the entirety of your career like you you should be able to like call upon and regurgitate that information so it's like read the book because it's not in a tone of voice and it's not being demonstrated to you it's how you perceive it if you watch a video it's somebody else's style and if you think if you're not doing it like this or like that 
then you're doing it wrong. If you read a book, it allows you to like uh, think like 360 around what it is you're trying to achieve. And it's like, it allows you to decide every which move and how you make that. So how you palette the brush and how somebody else might palette the brush might be different. Um, that's the craziest thing in all of pinstriping is no one's figured out how to feel that drag when you palette a brush. No book, no video, no nothing will get you that feel. And I'll, I constantly at shows will get people that are like, oh, I'm trying it. But it's like, how do you get the paint to flow just like you? And I say, come here and I'll take the brush and I'll palette it up and I'll say, try that same motion. It's like, you feel that, that it's kind of sticking to the paper and like in a loose grip, it would almost pull the brush out of your hand but it's like it still glides and it's still picking up that, that paint. That feeling right there, and I've had plenty of people follow up with me, call, text, whatever, next time they saw me and they're like, thank you so much for that piece of information. That, that was the missing link. I was thinning with mineral spirits when I should have used turpentine or I was using high temp producer when I should have used low temp producer. I was using a phone book when I should have used glossy paper or whatever it may be and they're like, now I have that feel and now it's now that my line consistency is so much better and I can I can pull a line two or three times as long and there's plenty of paint left or I'm getting that snap on the letter and it's not blowing out on me and it's like you know that's like that that's that's the key right there I I found um, so some of uh, several of my favorite big jobs were all race cars um, which for me are still a big undertaking um, for other people. It's just another day at work, but um, I've done a bunch of restoration uh, race car lettering. Um, one of the most notable ones is Rob Ida's Hemi Healy, uh, his father's uh, original race car. I did that with Alan Johnson down at English Town in the pits um, back in 2015. And that car went on to be the cover of Hot Rod Magazine. Um, so like, that was like the very first big job that I ever did. And it definitely sticks out of my head as like one of the prouder achievements that I've had. Um, but I, and I think about that job when I do all the other big ones, um, because I've always been like an on the road, uh, painter. So like I've driven three, four hours at the crack of dawn to be at a job to start at eight and done 10, 12, 14 hours worth of painting and then drove three, four hours home. Um, just crazy marathon work like that and you just think about it the whole drive there and the whole week before and you get it all planned out in your head and every single from you know what side of the vehicle you're going to start on you know it's like do you warm the brushes up on the passenger side so that the driver's side looks even better because that's the side the customer is going to see every day and you know do you you know work in a circle do you start with this color start with that color um Lay, layout, getting the whole vehicle laid out, you know, on a lot of these restoration jobs that I've done, you're looking at old photos. Um, I just did a car a couple months ago. I haven't posted any pictures of it, but it was a 41 Willys gasser that raced back in the late sixties that I uh, reproduced all of its original graphics on. Um, and you know, it's, I take the pictures and I manipulate them on my iPad and I make projections and I, you know, to, measure how it would fit on the door based on the photos and you know knowing that like a sign painter is going to use a yardstick so it's like that line of text is you know going to be 36 inches it's probably two or three yardsticks thick you know so it's it's maybe three and a half or four inches tall and knowing all those little idiosyncrasies and to kind of reach that end goal but you know just constantly thinking efficiently to you know get to a good finished final product. I would love to do more um, big wall dog stuff, uh, wall jobs. I mean, I've done a few here and there, various different, you know, simple projects. Um, I just a couple uh, months ago did a, um, a five by 10 Coca-Cola billboard. Um, that was on a, a cinder block wall, but it was in a building. Um, but it was cool because it was like, you know, four or five pounce patterns, you know, two foot by five foot pounce patterns, um, you know, and trying to get them to stay on the wall and line up and, you know, 
make sure that you can see the, the pounce pattern when you remove it and, you know, getting the paint to cover. And uh, I got a little funny story on that. I called up my buddy Igor about uh, doing a job like that because he does a lot of them and he's really good. And I asked him, you know, what paint do you use and blah, blah, blah. And he's like, oh, you got to get this and this and, you know, you know, go for it. And I remember I was on the job for about an hour painting red and I'm cutting in the lettering and it's like going on like ketchup. <laughs> so I called Igor like, hey, uh, you know, this paint covers like shit. And he goes, well, he's like, what, do you think you were going to be done by lunch? He's like, he's like, you got to maybe do a couple coats, bud. And it's, it's funny because like you don't think uh, in most sign painting, you know, maybe a double coat a letter like in white or yellow or something. But to like, you know, when you do a wall job, you paint each color. Um, so you don't paint the whole background white and put white letters on it. Um, so to think to have to cut it all in in two coats and it's like, it, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, this, this wall just got big because now you're painting the whole thing two or three times, you know, and it's like, oh, you know, it's a, it, it's a big undertaking. <laughs> I cherish my piece. So, and protect your piece. Money isn't everything um, all the time. Uh, I don't like to be disrespected. Um, I don't like to be told what I'm worth. Um, I will I will dictate that to you. Um, and I'm very adamant about that. I'm, I'm young in this industry and I've been taken advantage of and I've been known when I, or knew when I was being taken advantage of. Um, and you pick and choose your battles. Um, sometimes you have a customer, you know, the whole, it's not going to be perfect, go get a sticker is, you know, not necessarily true. You know, if it's really that bad, then it's, you just did a bad job. If they're being a little ridiculous, it's like, well, you know, yeah, it's going to have a brush stroke in it. It's hand painted, you know, like, um, but I don't have too many difficult customers. Um, difficult customers because they didn't like your work and difficult customers because they don't want to pay you are two different types of difficult customers. Um, and then you have impossible customers. You know, I've, I had jo a job that I did on a guy's car, um, you know, eight, 10, 12 hours worth of work. I charged what, what it was worth. He paid me, not even 24 hours later, I got a text, he said, hey, I just want to let you know. I took it off, it had nothing to do with you. He goes, I, I gave you my vision, you, you know, gave me what I, what I wanted, but it, it didn't look right to me. He's like, he didn't want any money back. He wasn't looking for an apology. And I didn't apologize. You know, I just, I said, you know, I, I wish you the best with your project and going forward. And I hope you, that you achieve the goal that, that you were, you know, looking for. But you can't take it personal. You can't get mad. You know, I've had people threaten to sue me over work. And you just say like, okay, like, go, yeah, go ahead. Sit. Like they're not, most people aren't. And if they do, if you did your job right, then it, it's going to be open, shut, and done, you know. But you got to maintain a professional attitude the entire time. You can't take it personal. Um, if you do your job right from the start, you got nothing to worry about. Everybody, uh, all the artists, I, you know, Alan Johnson, uh, Jeff TV, uh, Bert, Tukey, Glenn Weisberger. Uh, Igor, Hot Rod Jen, Bill Rydell, Charlie Decker, Beth, uh, Cameron Bartlett. Uh, he's another really good close friend of mine. Um, you know, his work's crazy. Um, just every, everybody, you know, those are, those guys, it's, they're like my friends. Alan Johnson put it to me best. He said, uh, the, the, the coolest thing about this whole field, career field is that, uh, you don't have any idols. They all become your friends. You know, and you know, it, everybody calls each other and asks questions and I call all of them too much. And luckily they all answer the phone for me still. And I really, truly appreciate that. I mean, I think of some of these people like family. Um, so it, it's, it's awesome to have all these positive influences and be able to text and call and be in the middle of a job and be back yourself into a corner and be like, oh man, what color do I outline this in? I have to outline it, but what color do I use? You know, we take for granted that we have cell phones and stuff. I mean, these guys were sending Polaroids back and forth to one another, waiting for Seincraft to come out. 
I mean, like, you know, the letterheads, you know, started as, you know, you got to think of, it was a paper f flyer that they mailed you. They got your address out of Signcraft. They mailed you a flyer to come to their, their event. And you got an atlas from the gas station and drove across the country to find this place. You never, you know, we have maps and texting and groups and emails and all this. It's crazy what we have at our fingertips. And I mean, these pioneers did it with nothing. Pen and paper. <laughs> um, it comes down to the, to the client. Um, a, a lot of the bigger name guys out there, you know, although they might be known for their truck lettering or their hand painted signs and stuff or gold leaf windows, they, they a lot of them still do vinyl. Um, I work with, you know, a couple of guys, uh, shops in the area, you know, if I get a call for a vinyl job and stuff and, you know, I'll like, uh, you know, kind of set it all up and everything and you make a couple bucks cause I'm, I'm running a business. Um, you know, and, and my, my other friend in their shop will get some work and I kept a client, a customer because I just solved their problem. So it's like, I still might get a, another job. If somebody calls you up and they say, oh, I want a truck lettered, you know, can you come down and slap a sticker on it? I'd be like, oh, I do hand lettered. And they go like, oh, okay, click. It's like, you can say, hold on. Like, is there a reason that you want vinyl? Did you know this was an option? You know, um, so what So what you need to do for your clientele in, in this career field is that you need to communicate to the client and attribute wealth to the service that you're providing. So you have to say, hey, you know, there's a million landscapers out there with a million trucks and some of them have, you know, lame vinyl graphics on it and it's like Times New Roman and it's like lime green and white and you can't read it on a brand new F-350 and it's like you have a $95,000 truck and a $50,000 trailer full of equipment and then you, you stopped at $250 vinyl graphics and then you can explain to them, it's like, hey, you know, this kind of shows your individuality. I see you're a guy, you got tattoos, you got cool motorcycles, I, it's your business. You know, there's write-offs involved, but it's like the advertising that you get and the, the how you communicate to the customer. The customer feels like they met that owner because they can see that they're investing in their trucks and their equipment. And, you know, it, it shows how passionate they are about the service they provide, even if it's just fixing a leaky faucet. You know, it it it's just, there's it's a great outlet to, um, be able to have a conversation with people for the artist and for the business owner. So you, I don't think I'm competing with a, uh, a computer. Um, a lot of, a lot of truck graphics and stuff, it has a lot of computer aid. You know, I, I design stuff on, on my iPad to, you know, kind of get a basic idea of what I'm doing. Um, and I'll make a pounce pattern out of that. And then, you know, after I add inlines and outlines and shadows and shades and gold leaf and candy and airbrush and blah, 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 it looks nothing like that font that I, you know, and I move the kerning around or change serifs and what, whatever it is, um, you know, vinyl masks and frisks and things of that nature. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of, so, you know, you, right then and there, you could be using the vinyl to help you. Um, you know, some people say, well, it's, it's all gotta be ham. It's Glenn Weisberger said, nobody cares how you get from point A to point B as long as you arrive. So, you know, using all the different things that are available to you, I, I don't think you're competing with vinyl. Um, if anything, you can make vinyl work for you. It helps sell your work. You know, you say, hey, you know, your truck lettering looks like shit. That's a brand new truck. And, you know, the stickers are falling off of it. You know, the paint ages, vinyl dies, you know, and all that stuff will, you know, help grow your business. And keeping my ideas fresh and interesting, um, Sometimes I'll look at reference material. I have an old album in my phone of screenshots and things I've, things I've taken a picture of and seen at, you know, truck shows, bike shows, out and about, um, plenty of stuff online, but I don't leave it open and stare at it. I just give myself like five minutes of looking and retaining what I picked up and then I go and I paint and I won't look back at anything because then you're just going to be copying or... It, if it doesn't look like how you want, thought it would, should have looked, then you think it's wrong. Um, so I, I just, you know, try new things, mix things together. You know, if you see two colors that you liked, you know, maybe try them in pinstriping or, you know, if you always start all your designs with a teardrop in the middle, you know, put two on the outside, leave the middle open. You know, 
uh, start with the fill in and then outline it or outline and then fill it in and you know different things like that but just try to do things different when you're at a bike show you know there's days i've pinstriped 15 gas tanks and helmets let's say two similar shaped items 15 of them in a day it's like how do you put all 15 next to each other none of no two look like copy paste you know it's you start on the left, you start on the right, you start high, you start low, you went across the middle, you go across the outside, you swing up, you swing down, you know, it's like, if you just went out to the left, go into the right, <laughs> you gotta just try and make it new and different. Uh, my girlfriend, <laughs> my girlfriend uh, keeps me motivated, uh, I, yeah, she's awesome, uh, shout out to Ashley, and uh, she she's a big motivator, my parents are, they help me a lot. Um, my friends, I've always surrounded myself with positive influences. Um, that's why I'm very thankful that I've been as successful as I have been because I, I surrounded myself with people that are successful. Um, and I've taken, I've cut people out of my life that I realized subtracted from it. So, uh, you know, when, if you wake up and it's, you know, eight o'clock on Saturday morning and you're like, man, I, I'm pretty comfortable right now. And you get on your phone and you see, it's like, oh, so-and-so started working two hours ago. Uh, they posted, oh, they're on the road today. Oh, they're making money. And it's like, and it gets to be a little bit taxing. You know, I'm, a, I'm pretty hard on myself sometimes. And it's, you get in some pretty deep ruts. And the, sometimes those ruts drag out for months. Um, but you just keep pushing, try and get one more thing done today, finish that job draw that uh you know design up send out that invoice collect that money make that phone call i make a lot of lists a lot of lists um i always start the list with make list and i always end the list with finish list um but just to stay motivated you know because it's, it's a long game this is all a long game so it's like every job that you do is a business card to get you potential work down the road and i've been doing it so long that i just had a guy call me the other day um he, he told me where he got my card. He got my card for me like eight years ago. And it was like, and I remember the job that I was talking about. I vaguely remembered the guy. And it's just crazy that it's like, you know, business cards that I was handing out 10 years ago are still working for me. You know, what are business cards, you know, to, they're like four cents a piece. Uh, you know, so it's, that was a, a really good four cent investment. Um, one big thing uh, that I kind of morphed into this to stand apart from others, uh, from, uh, talking to customers is, um, doing what you say you're going to do, being honest, um, and just like, little details like being punctual, being clean, being polite, uh, being attentive, um, is just a lot. I know it sounds like, like you're, of course you're going to do that, but it's like you, you have to, consciously do it you know so it's like you know don't leave little scraps of tape all over the floor or it's like if you drip a little something wipe it up um you know clean throw everything out in a garbage can you know shove a rag in the cup so that it doesn't leak paint everywhere think little little things like that being punctual is a big one i mean all a lot of old pinstriper sign guys they all got a bad rap for you know maybe partying too much or drinking and you know i i like to have a good time and anybody who's ever hung out with me knows i like to have a good time but, uh, you know, if you say you're going to be there at 8 a.m., you know, you should be pulling up at, you know, 10 to 8. Um, or telling them, you know, way before, hey, you know, I hit some traffic or, hey, I, you know, I slept in a little late. Um, you know, be just be honest and, you know, uh, charge fairly and appropriately. Um, you know, that, that'll help you stand out because it's like, hey, I'm not the cheapest, um, you know, nor would I really call it affordable more it's you're going to get what you paid for you know I'm going to do the best job you know and it's and it's well-rounded uh customer service so it, you know if, if there's a problem or a question or concern you know being attentive to try and rectify that um those are all things that I think really help more than your artwork because your artwork will speak for yourself they wouldn't even be talking to you if they didn't like what you did so it's like I think it's more important to stand out from other artists um in a professional level um, and I think that's um, where a lot of people leave maybe something to be desired. Um, maybe not my work personally, but I, I feel like 
social media has made a lot of people numb to subpar work. Um, I feel like there's a lot of people out there, a lot of content, a lot of work that's going out there. And, you know, um, you know, there was a point in time where the majority of the work that you saw was very high quality. Um, and I feel like it's kind of subtracted from that a little bit. But I, at, at the same time, you know, when you are doing a good job and people like you, it's easier for them to show their friends across the country. It's not like, oh, you got to go down to Barnes & Noble and pick up this this magazine and, you know, flip to this page and he did that. You know, it's like, you can, oh, I just send you his profile or here's his number, or, you know. Um, so social media has got, you know, helps and hurts. Uh, my, my, my family's awesome. Um, both my parents, um, uh, have been just, my dad used to call pinstriping travel baseball. Um, you know, every weekend for my whole childhood, we went to shows from May to October, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, he would take me to events like Artie's party or Chicago brush masters. And my, you know, my mom would tag along to events or come to a car show in town and see me working and stand in the crowd. And she'd try to work her way to the front and people would be like, lady, we're all trying to watch. And she'd be like, that's my son. And they'd be like, Oh, oh right this way, ma'am. You know, and, uh, my girlfriend, um, again, she's awesome. Uh, you know, she comes to the shows with me and she'll work the booth and, you know, she'll, if I'm walking around talking to a customer, doing whatever, she's handing out business cards, she's writing down phone numbers and, you know, prepping bikes, wiping things down, selling t-shirts, getting stickers, showing people social media. Uh, she comes down to the shop, brings me dinner. Um, you know, it, it's really awesome. My, you know, my, my parents, uh, since I started, you know, have supported me and, you know, going to college for a one trade or whatever and then coming home and being like you know mom dad i'm gonna be an, an artist and you know to, you know that's a tough pill to swallow for some people my parents have been like no you got it my dad said if you listen if you want to do this and you want to do it for a career and you know make make a you know your livelihood out of it then all i ask of you is to do the best job that you possibly can he was like if it's not perfect start over he was like, fix it, always put your best foot forward, you know, do right by others as you wish that others would do by you. Um, you know, my mom has is, is, uh, um, uh, been very understanding and, you know, getting paint on the tablecloth in the, in the dining room and, you know, leaving freshly painted motorcycle parts in the spare bedroom because it's a clean environment and, you know, or rolling up the hallway carpet because I drew a pattern on the floor in the hallway, you know, like she, she's been... Um, you know, a, a saint in in uh, allowing the whole family household to be a, an art studio at times. I would I want to do a funny car. I just I want to do like a flat body fiberglass funny car. Uh, you know, headlights, grill, bumpers, gold leaf lettering, and airbrush shades and shadows, and all the different just the whole car, you know, even if I didn't even paint the car and I just did the, the graphics portion. Um, but I, I really, you know, I'd love to see a car in, in the shop here on a body stand. And, you know, that's another day at work for a lot of guys or people have done so many that they probably think it's funny, but I haven't done a full nostalgia funny car yet. And that is that I've done a lot of really cool stuff uh, over the years, a lot of crazy different projects and stuff, but I'd really, really like to get to do one of those. Um, or a tractor trailer. I'd really love to paint, uh, like fully do, go crazy on like a Peterbilt or something. Um, yeah, I, 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 I'm a big fan of uh, large cars. And uh, so th those are probably two of the, the biggest ones. A, a, a big thing that I use to s stand apart from the rest, especially in my area, I mean, I'm, I'm in a pretty uh, densely populated area, especially when it comes to pinstripers and, um, I mean like Excaliburs down the street. <laughs> uh, Mr. J lives right around the corner. Alan Johnson is, you know, an hour away. Jen's two hours away. Bert is around the corner. Um, Glenn's shop was about an hour from here. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of artists around here and there's a lot of younger guys too. And, but what I'm trying to do is take the best of everybody that I've learned and, from the area that we live in to how you operate a business to what you do with your money and, you know, 
do everything legit. You know, I have an LLC. I'm fully insured, you know, for, you know, any type of work that I want to do. Um, you know, I, I know that I, I'm protected in that regard. Um, just paying attention to, you know, making sure you're taking care of your customers, whether they spend a hundred bucks with you or $10,000 with you. Um, paying attention to your, your, um, you know, your overhead, you know, you got rent, utilities, your insurances, you know, even things like health insurance or retirement, you know, those are all things that I, I contribute to, um, to make sure that, you know, like I'm doing the best I can with what I'm providing for myself and making sure that I'm creating a future for myself. Like I said, it's a long game. Um, you know, I, I, I pay attention to everything. I, I, I know a Stabilo is $1.89. I know that a, a paper Dixie cup is seven cents. A microfiber is 30, 30 cents. You know, um, you know, just I uh, an ounce of pain is 10 bucks. You know, like it, when you finish a job, you go, oh, well, there's 10 cups there all with a little smidge of paint in it. So it's like that, that's, you know, 30 bucks worth of materials that, you know, went in the garbage or whatever. And, you know, uh, just pay attention to every little detail. I'm not the best at it by any means. I have a lot to learn, um, but just, you know, especially being an artist, you know, you got to, most successful artists are, are successful people, not just their artwork is really good, but like they were smart with their investments. They made their money work for them. You know, they did the right thing with, by, you know, by themselves and their families and their loved ones, you know, to um, get the most they could out of their career. Hopefully a bigger shop. <laughs> this is a really tiny shop. Uh, but I would love to be able to pull a truck in and open both doors and dance around it. That's, uh, I guess that's the next big goal. Um, I'm looking into um, bigger places now and, you know, pursuing different avenues in that regard. Um, maybe a house, you know, if anybody's looking to buy a house right now, it's not, not easy. Um, but I'm hoping that a bigger, bigger shop um, steadier cash flow, maybe larger corporate accounts, um, allocating more time and resources to traveling, doing larger shows. Um, I'd really like to work with more corporate companies. You know, I, I, um, you know, I, I like to demonstrate my, my people skills and, uh, communicating products and theories and, um, you know, uh, different, aspects of the industry, you know, besides just the painting and, you know, so maybe doing some teaching or trade events and things of that nature. I'd, I'd like to expand and grow and share my thoughts and opinions, um, with, you know, a larger audience. Um, I don't really know what, in what regard just yet, but, uh, shout out to, I mean, all the people that I named in the video and, and plenty of people that I missed. Um, uh, my mom and dad, I love love you guys. Uh, Ashley, I love you, and thank you so much. Uh, you know, thank you to Gnarly Magazine. I really appreciate the opportunity, and um, you know, uh, reach out to me. Um, you know, just one on one. If you saw the video, you liked it, you had any questions or things you were interested in, I'm I'm more than happy to uh, help you out. When and you know, we all you know collectively will succeed together if we all work together and stuff. So anybody wants to reach out or Give me your two cents or tell me you didn't like what you heard. <laughs> Let me know. I appreciate, uh, you know, each and every one of you.